In this class of our tutorial, we're going to model a point attractor, as you can see here, and attract a series of pyramids. As I just move this, you can see they're going to attract to this. And then we are going to add some multiplication. As you can see, we can control this multiplication. And also change the number of these cells. As you can see, I can change the size, and it's going to affect the results. And finally, at the end, we can simply bake uh, those extrusion and the solids. So if I just bake this, you can see that we have this results in Rhino. So this is a small and a short tutorial of how you can use point attractors to uh, produce something like this. And let's get started. Okay, to get started from scratch, what I want to do is to uh, go to the... Uh, vector grid and I'm going to choose a square grid for this tutorial so let's just put this square grid here and uh, we can define a size for this so let's just define a size increase the size and then give this a number slider so the extent X and extent Y will define the number of the rows and uh, columns of the cells the okay let's just put the bifocals plugin so you can see this square and before, in many tutorials, I've talked about this, that uh, in the vector grid section, what you just put as an output, uh, you usually have it in rows. So you can see that it's producing that. Let me just decrease that so I can understand, uh, explain this. You can see it's 12 to 8. That means 12 groups of 8 cells. So uh, this is the group 1, for example, and so on. So we don't need this. I'm going to flatten this. So we have all of those 96 cells in one group. Uh, if you don't know about flatten or graft, I will put up a video uh, up here. You can watch it and understand more about these things. Okay, for the next part, I want to define a point attractor. So I'm going to define a point and set this point wherever I want. And this will affect our cells. Uh, the most simple way you can extrude those cells into a pyramid is to go to the surface in the free form we'll have extrude point so what i want to do is to extrude these cells into that that is the base profile curve uh, into a point you can also connect a surface to these cells and then uh, it will produce a complete solid so remember you can always extrude those curves to a point or extrude a surface to the point so if i just give this to the point you can see that they are all extruding to the point attractor, which is not what we want, but I wanted to show you that the extrusion to point is simple. Okay, for now, what we can do is to go to the surface and use this area tool to extract the centroid and move these points up. So I'm going to move these points in the Z direction. Give this a number slider and this will be just turn this off uh, this is the base height for the pyramids so if I give this point uh, points to the point input you can see that this is going to produce a pyramid that's really easy but what we want to do is to move these points towards the point attractor so we have to do uh, some more work here uh, one of the ways you can do that is to go to the vector and produce a vector to point and what does that this mean is that we want to produce a vector right from the centroids toward the points attractor so now what we want to do is to make a vector from these points to this point you can also look at it like this in the curve section line from this one to this this is what we are making and uh, the way I'm going to do it is to right click and unitize this to true and that is because we just want the direction unitize means that the uh, vector is just one uh, length uh, the length is one unit so it's just going to give you a direction right to that point attractor uh, what we want to do is to move those points Let's just play with this a little bit, move these points which we made with this vector. If I multiply that with a number slider and give that to the motion, let's just turn this off, 
skip this number slider. You can see that I can move this towards the pointer tracker. So this is one of the ways you can simply do that and give that to the extrusion. And here we go. Let me just put a display custom preview so you can see the cells and the pyramids. And that's the way you can simply just increase the multiplication and make that pattern happen, okay? And as we move this pointer tractor, it's going to affect the results like that. Uh, another thing I want to explain before we end this tutorial is that what about uh, moving this point too much towards the pointer tractor, but this one not far away, because we want to put that uh, simply near the center and then increase the movement, right? So we want to make that effect. This is also simple. What you want to do is to and don't give that a single multiplication and we can go to the vector, uh, find the distance between the points and the point attractor, which was exactly like a line, as I explained. And uh, reverse the distance because we want these uh, points that are too far away not to move, okay? So I'm going to reverse the distance and then multiply that with a multiplication. So we can control that. Because this is uh, too much, I'm going to multiply that with something smaller than 1, okay? So maybe 0 0.3 is fine. So remember, this time we have to give numbers smaller than 1 and then give it to the multiplication. You can just change this number, and as you can see, it's increasing as the point gets closer. If we take off the reverse, you can see that this one is going to move more and this one less. So remember that reverse will help you to move that more, okay? So what I want to do is to simply move this point attractor. You can see that this is affecting the result. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe to our channel and like and comment on this video to support us and see you next time.